The Bull Street District is the former South Carolina State Hospital and was run by the South Carolina Department of Mental Health for 150 years. And um, as the way that we care for the mentally ill changed, the need for this type of campus changed as well. Uh, this is about a 180 acre track of land uh, that for all intents and purposes was often considered uh, a city within a city. This was the largest mental facility on the East Coast during the Civil War. Um, so it just has a lot of beautiful, rich history, some good, some bad. This used to be the center and the bustle of the city. And then over time and trends, everybody moved out to the suburbs and Columbia wanted to revitalize this section of their downtown area. After the decentralization of uh, the Department of Mental Health various facilities, um, particularly here at Bull Street, you saw a reduction of force in terms of the personnel who worked here, the staff members, and certainly those individuals who were benefiting from mental health treatment. As a consequence, there were a lot of buildings that became vacated, um, not the least of which was really the largest, um, that is the Bull Street's Babcock building. The state marketed this property for two years in 55 countries and there was one group that said we'll take it. The building had been abandoned for about 25 years and a number uh, of developers had come to look at it. A number of the groups would walk 50 feet into the building, turn around and walk out. It was really in rough shape. Uh, it's a massive building, hard to really get your arms around. We got to visit it in about 2014 and it had been abandoned probably since the mid 90s. So it looked like a building that was abandoned for 30 years. Uh, people like to access this building and, and use it for all sorts of different things. When I saw it for the first time, obviously it was very dilapidated. So you've got the peeling paint and the debris. There were some areas of caved in flooring and stuff like that. So roof leaks, window leaks, broken glass. It, it looked like a haunted house. <laughs> Until we could get the Babcock to work, Bull Street was never really going to materialize. When we got involved, uh, the developer had realized he was not going to be able to sell the building. And uh, he offered it to us for a dollar. Just given its scale and its size, it really took someone with a very deep uh, expertise in historic renovation. So when we were introduced to Clacken, we knew almost immediately that they were the right group. Clacken focuses on uh, adaptive reuse of historic buildings. We started initially in Richmond, moved into North Carolina, and now uh, with the Babcock is our first project in South Carolina. We're given the bones by history, and uh, we try to bring them up to modern standards and create a community around them. We're fortunate that we have an excellent architectural team and an excellent contractor who really see vision in spaces like this and can see, you know, what they can become again. It takes so many groups and so many people and so many processes to bring a building like this to fruition. The number of days between we first put this under contract and when we started construction, 1,705 days. I told someone recently that that's basically rounds to forever. It took a lot of work for the Bercadia team, the HUD team, the contractor, the architect, everybody working together to make sure that this very important building could be preserved. This is our first uh, HUD D4 loan with Bercadia. We had done other uh, refinances with Bercadia, but this is our first D4 with anybody. Uh, and so they walked us through the process. And so there were fits and starts during the whole process. We would get a design in place, we'd get Percadia to size alone, and then we'd realize it wouldn't work, or the historic tax credits were going to expire, or we, for whatever reason we had to put it on hold. We had just put our insurance policy on this building, and then we got the news in September of 2020 that there was a massive fire. I mean, it was, again, I think about 120 firefighters here getting this fire under control and getting it out. My first words were devastated. And then somebody sent me, it wasn't even the news, it was a video. And it was the video of the couple on fire. When you look at the landscape of Columbia, there's essentially the state capitol dome, and then there's the Babcock dome. For the city of Columbia, South Carolina, 
It's one of two really iconic pieces of architecture. Generations of individuals uh, from the 1880s all the way up through um, the early 21st century would have expected to see the cupola uh, that graced the Babcock building. It was the element of the building that people really were attached to and then suddenly it was gone. At first it was just kind of like, all right, well, how bad is it? And then of course the news reports started coming out, the pictures started coming out, and it was clearly a very devastating fire. And so, you know, we thought that we could have lost the building altogether. In the paper the next day, the fire chief and the mayor said the building was lost. And um, I was crushed. Our teams got together. The, the, as it turned out, the day of the fire, there was actually a HUD employee in Columbia, South Carolina. They saw the fire firsthand. Because of how important this building was, because we had been working on it for years, there was a lot that got lost when the fire occurred. We all thought, you don't get historic tax credits unless you preserve the historic architecture, which had just completely crumbled. Turns out that it, the fire burned about between 10 and 15 percent of the interior of the building. And so the, what we had to do is work with the National Park Service to figure out, is there still enough of this building to save? And they very quickly came back with the answer yes, and so the whole project would move forward. I think it took us another three months to come up with a game plan that everybody was okay with. The game plan was, can we redesign a new piece to mimic the historic cupola? We didn't have any drawings of the cupola. So the architect had to come, you know, look at historic photos, look at any photos that we had taken, and come up with their own set of drawings to replicate the cupola as best as they could. I remember them commenting that they had to count bricks. You don't just go to Lowe's to get a cupola. There's only uh, a couple of people in the country that can build uh, you know, an element like that. The round dome was built in Kentucky. The base, which is called the Clear Story, was built here on site. And the sinking of the engineering and structural drawings for that was a real challenge. We had an amazing event when we um, set, the, set the dome. You could have heard a pin drop outside with, you know, 100 people watching it because we were all just holding our breath like, okay. Get it up there, get, okay, get it there. No, don't drop it, oh dear God, please don't drop it. You know, like that was my biggest thing was, what else could possibly go wrong for us on this project? Until it went on, I was afraid that it wouldn't match. <laughs> uh, but it did and, um, you know, we were able to restore the skyline. It was a crowning achievement. It makes someone who's in my position so proud of the entire team, of everyone who we work with. I can only imagine what it meant to people who actually live here and have been staring at the skyline their whole lives. To continually be able to come back after those challenges is unbelievable. A project of this scale and of this complexity takes input from all over. And in the case of uh, Bricadia, they were there for us from the beginning. Uh, and and when we, we would have to pause, they would pause with us. We'd restart it, tell them what had changed, why it should be done now, and they would get it going. For me, my favorite part of work is getting to help people achieve their goals. I bet they ran 15 or 20 uh, loan sizings over that period of time. And they just were there for us when we were ready. To be able to come up with creative financing solutions, multiple layers of subsidies, historic tax credits, to actually be able to deliver more housing to residents, that creates opportunity in cities that need those options. It's a building of architectural and aesthetic consequence. It's a beautiful structure. And I think that the retention of it um, is not just a nod to the past and an acknowledgement of that, but it's also the foundation for a brilliant future.